Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you all the anatomy of a hard drive. To begin with, what is a hard drive? A hard drive is a device found in nearly all personal computers, laptops, and servers. A hard drive serves a simple but fundamental purpose. It stores data and permits retrieval of that data on an on-demand basis. The potentially available storage space on a drive is divided into allocated space and unallocated space. Allocated space is that portion of a drive that is actually available for use. Unallocated space is that portion of a drive that is not available for use. It is wasted space. How does it store this information? All data is stored in its most basic form as a series of ones and zeros. These ones and zeros are physically stored as a positive or negative magnetic charge inside the hard drive. But where is the data actually stored inside this thing? I'm glad you asked, because that's what we're here for. To answer, we'll put on our explorer's helmets and delve into the innards of a hard drive. The first parts that come to your notice are likely to be the reflective disks. These are called platters, and they're the pieces inside the hard drive that physically contain your data. Platters are made either entirely of a magnetic material or are glass coated in a magnetic material. This enables the ones and zeros of your files to be stored as a positive or negative magnetic charge on the surface of the platters. Each surface of each platter is called a head. There are two heads to a platter. Each head is divided into tracks and sectors. Take a look at the example hard drive on screen which has eight heads or eight platter faces. When you take tracks from each face of a platter, which are all the same distance from the center, you get what's called a cylinder. The hard drive will always write data starting from the outside edge of a platter, moving in to the inside as it fills up free space. A cylinder will always be filled with data before the hard drive will write to a new cylinder. Tracks are made up of a variable number of sectors, which each typically store 512 bytes of data. Think of a sector as a folder containing multiple sheets of paper documents. A sector resides inside a track or hanging folder. Multiple tracks make up a cylinder, much like a drawer in a filing cabinet. All platters together make an entire filing cabinet ready to hold your data, but every bit of data must be filed away in those 512 byte sectors. When manufactured, drives are not formatted. All, drives, all space on the drive is unallocated and not available for use. To create allocated space, the drive must be formatted. This is done by a software application. Depending on the application, the drive itself and user choices, such as partitioning, made during the formatting setup process, most, but not all of the drive, becomes available for use. Space is allocated, in other words. Some portion of the drive is not available for use by virtue of the formatting process. This space is unallocated and will remain so until the drive is reprepared for use or reformatted. That's great, but how does the data actually get onto those platters? There are two components of a hard drive that work in unison to put your data onto the platters. These are the read-write mechanism and the controller board. Read-write heads are the physical pieces that actually write the data to a platter. As you can see in your hard drives and in the simulated view of a write operation on screen, there are triangular actuator arms that reach over the platters. At the end of each of these actuator arms is an electronic component that hovers just above, but never touches, the platter. These components are the read-write heads. They are responsible for writing the magnetic charge to the platter and reading it back when necessary. Read-write heads never touch the surface of a platter. Instead, they hover just over the surface. The actuator arm can move from the innermost to the outermost tracks of a platter by means of the actuator, the metal casing behind the actuator arm. The actuator contains a mechanism that uses an electric charge to move the actuator arm up and down over the platter. You'll see a ribbon cable coming out of the actuator. This leads to the controller board. If you turn over your hard drive, you'll see a circuit board containing many electronic components and chips. These chips are responsible for telling the actuator where to move the actuator arm in order to read or write the data. 
Once the data has been written or retrieved, it is passed to the computer by the controller board. The processor and operating system software don't just magically read this data straight from the hard drive, however. A hard drive also has what is called a file system to facilitate the easy retrieval of files. What is a file system? Think of a file system as similar to the filing cabinet comparison used earlier, but bringing it one step further. Instead of just making folders and drawers available on the cabinet for storing documents in and leaving it at that, we write a file system to the drive in order to file documents in alphabetized and color-coded order. During use, data is stored to the allocated space on the drive. Some data files, such as those associated with the operating system, are always stored in the same place on the drive to facilitate computer operation. Other files, such as user files, electronic mail files, are stored on the hard drive's new file system in accordance with an algorithm. This algorithm varies from computer to computer and from drive to drive, but the intended effect is the same, to avoid overwriting active files, to avoid storing files in pieces scattered across the drive if possible, and to facilitate high-speed retrieval by storing documents in those physical locations where the drive's performance is optimal. How does the computer actually